Playground! Hooray! Today, the enemies of freedom and our children's future are China's global ambitions, Russia's aggression, the tyranny of big government, and the censorship of big tech. If freedom is to endure, we can no longer be led by people who have faltered in their responsibility to keep it. Our highest duty as Americans is to pass the torch of liberty to the next generation. I'm Jim Carlin, candidate for U.S. Senate, and I approve this message. Paid for by Carlin for U.S. Senate. What's up, dude? What do you think radio is doing currently to grow talent, if anything at all? And if they are even growing talent, where do you think you would grade the radio business when it comes to growing talent, keeping the millennials and Generation Z into radio, and just seeing a future of radio? What do you think of? Fuck radio. Bangers. Hope y'all had a happy Halloween, bitches. Yeah. Some of your tricks ain't a treat. And some don't smell good, so nobody want to eat. Yes. Welcome to episode three of the SBK show. I'm SBK, and I'm here for all the smoke. I'm here with the shits. And by the shits, you know what I'm talking about. Let's get right into it. Um... You know, this thing through the first two episodes has been interesting. Believe it or not, I get more nervous, I get a little bit more apprehensive about doing the podcast than I did doing a show, which I had to do five nights a week for three hours. It was, <laughs> yo, I did it forever. Like, I don't know why it, it takes so much for me to get the nerve up to do the show has nothing to do with the information it has nothing to do with prep it has nothing to do with me being solo it has nothing to do with uh you know that kind of stuff what it has to do with is i had a hell of a week first of all and i picked a hell of a time to start a podcast but i knew that if i didn't start it when i did i might have never started it um and i still don't know how i feel about it all Here's the good thing, the exciting thing. I feel like the podcast is going to take shape and form, but I don't know what form and shape it's going to take. I know that this episode would be a little bit different because I am past that part of the podcast where I feel like I need to explain to you what happened. I want to thank everybody for downloading episode one and did. That's what we call it too. Duh. This is episode three or thres. Working on my Spanish because I'm looking for me a um, Dominican bride. We'll talk about that later. We probably won't. Whenever I tell y'all we're going to talk about something later, I really have all intention to talk about it later. But you know we ain't going to talk about it later. You know why? Because I forgot. Yeah. And I moved on. Yes, I did. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about a couple of things. I got a couple of stories to tell you tonight. Woo, man, just some stuff I've been sitting on. And thing I like about it, it's nothing you can find on Google. It's stuff that I pull from a real life in my everyday out and aboutings. Just, you know, going out one at a time and glad handing to people. You never know what type of things you're going to see. They say there's eight million stories in the naked city, and this is just one of them. Well, I'm going to give you a whole lot of them tonight. And by a whole lot, I mean maybe one or two, probably three that I have written down. But I'm going to forget them because I'll get into another zone. But I do appreciate everybody who downloaded the first three episodes. You don't know what you're getting. It's it's totally different now. Some of you may be disappointed thinking I was going to be more raw. I don't know what you would want me to be raw on, but I haven't really brought any topics to the table yet as far as topical things like, hey, guess who cheated on who? Hey, guess what famous person did this? Guess what famous person did that? Man, I never really cared about any of that shit, but you got to do that on a radio show daily. It's topical and Hey, 
That's what it is. So this is what this is. I want to tell you right out of the gate that um, and this may be old to some people. It may be new to other people. It doesn't matter. You say same shit all the time. And people don't really remember anything. And then they hear it that one time and they go, oh, my goodness, I didn't know that. I'm like, you ain't listening. So I'm going to explain to you why I start every show with fangles. I'm going to go brief and then I'm going to get into what I really want to get into. But I want to get into fingers. We're going to get into that. No, it's not fingers. Um, so I want to say that out of the gate. It's fingers. F-A-N-G-A-Z. Fingers. Now, if you say fingers, I let people slide because I know you're a civilian and you ain't about that life. But I had a really good friend named CJ. And he was a certified gun instructor. What do you call it? ATF? Nah, not ATF. What's the initials? NRA. He was a certified NRA gun instructor. And his nickname in the gun instructor world was Papa Cap. <laughs> and he ended up being a fan of the show. He listened in Orlando when I was doing SBK Live. And come to find out. That he lived in my neighborhood about two blocks over. It's a new neighborhood I lived in. And he reached out to me asking me if I would be interested in getting a concealed weapons permit. And I thought that would be a great idea. And he says, well, you know, I do private lessons and I would love to come over to your place and give you and your fiance a free uh, lesson or whatever, you know, like a free certification course. And then, you know, so. I thought that was good. I knew that she was not really into guns or the idea of guns. So I thought a private lesson would be something that would just make it a little bit more easy. Either way, I was going to get a concealed weapons permit because um, no, I believe in short sleeves, bare arms, Second Amendment. Let's go. And mostly I have a gun, not because I'm afraid of you. It's because you're afraid of me. So when we have a misunderstanding, mm, I'm going to make sure that I have a fa fighting chance. Emphasis on fighting chance. So Papa Cap, I call him CJ. He's my friend. Great guy. We ended up being really good friends. And I don't mean friends in the sake of uh, we were acquaintances that you know, saw each other all the time or he was a big fan of the show. So it was no, 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 no. We hung out our families. We hung out a lot. I used to come over to his house and hang out like all weekend. CJ was also really good at playing the guitar. He was good at pretty much anything. He was a handy guy. He could build stuff. He could do stuff. He was knowledgeable. He was a country dude. And we just kind of related to each other on so many levels. Plus, he loved weed and I loved weed, too. So it was just a lot of reasons why me and CJ became fast friends. CJ also was very instrumental in helping me put a band together and doing Fine Lady Mustache, my funk band that's now defunct. Oh, man. One of my biggest regrets. I don't have many regrets, but remember, the person that tells you they don't have any regrets in life is an asshole. It's cool to say, oh, I don't have any regrets. It made me the man that I am. Look at the man that you are. You could have been better. So I regret that I could not put my band back together and do a performance in the Tampa Bay area to introduce everybody to find Lady Mustache. But the pandemic hit. All kind of stuff went crazy. But let's get back to CJ. So CJ was very instrumental in putting Fine Lady Mustache together. All right. Long live the stash. One of these days. When things work out, we might put the stash back together. You never know. But when we do, you will know. Um, CJ was a friend of a guy who did local martial arts training. It wasn't just martial arts training. It was self-defense classes. Well, let's say it wasn't Kung Fu or Karate. It was called Fighting Chance Systems. And it was a situation where, see, because I was a lot of people 
who know me from Orlando know that I had a very big interest in Krav Maga, but they didn't have any proper classes or uh, a place that really focused and specialized in Krav Maga. So I ended up, man, I ended up going to like this karate place that had a Krav Maga class, but it wasn't really what I wanted. I wanted some hardcore, real deal, legitimate first rate Krav Maga instructors could never find them, could never find them. Me and CJ talked about this kind of stuff. We also talked about, man, I was going to study Sistema, which was a Russian martial art, but this is like hand to hand, close quarter combat emphasis on just staying alive, bro. Like just realistic situations, gun to your head. What you going to do? What you going to do? Knife to your throat. What you going to do? What you going to do? Well, you got to do something. Dying is not an option. No, sir. So CJ said, hey, I met this guy. And I don't know the circumstances behind them meeting. As soon as this episode is released, CJ will hear it and he will call and he will give me a whole rundown on the whole thing. And I'll be like, damn, I should have called you before I said this. But that's not how I do it. This is the way is that I do it. Hmm? I don't even know why I tried to say it like that. This is how I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, CJ said, hey, I got a guy that you need to meet. He has a system. It is kind of what you're looking for. You didn't want to do some long involved um, martial art thing. And this guy has people from every discipline of martial arts and they all come to his system because he simplified a system that will get you out of real life scenarios. He had a training camp and he had a house situation and every room was a different type of room. He had a bedroom where he trained you how to fight off attackers when you were prone, laying down on your back, like in your bed. He had a bar in the house and the bar was a scenario where you're at a bar and you get the hand on the shoulder you know, and he had the we go outside and we would do things with cars. You're in the driver's seat and you get approached. You're in the passenger seat. You get approached. It was real life situations. And his system was based on, well, hey, it has to work for a able bodied 24 year old guy. And it had to work for a 75 year old guy. Also had to work for a woman. And a child like it was just a thought out thorough system. And it was a guy named Jeff Maldivan. And he was an experienced martial artist in several disciplines. I'm not going to get into the technicals, but he also was a very a veteran Hollywood stunt man. Let me just give you this. If you saw the movie, The Patriot. What's the guy's name? Mel Douglas, Mel Tillis, Mel Gibson. Ah, yeah. Mel Gibson, the guy that killed Jesus. Mel Gibson in the movie, The Patriot, was trained to throw the tomahawks by chief. We called him chief. Chief Jeff Maldivan. We he trained Mel Gibson to do, to do that. He was also a stuntman in like some of your favorite action movies. But it's not about that as much as is it about the connection and me ended up meeting Chief and being trained by Chief. I um, I'll tell you, it was exactly what I was looking for. And I thoroughly enjoyed meeting the chief. I actually have a video of Chief coming into the studio with CJ. And us demonstrating some live techniques on the air. I have a video of that. So for some of the things that I'm talking about, some real life situations that you may encounter in an alley, um, in a bar, in a grocery store, in a dark parking lot. And, you know, he, he taught me. He taught some friends of mine. He also taught my fiance at the time. And, you know, it was the kind of thing where you walked away and you felt a little better about it. And you felt like if you got in a situation, you might have, hence the name of his course, a fighting chance. And when he talks about the story and when he talks about how he lost a family member 
because of violence, random violence, man, it, it he doesn't even have to sell it. it. It's just so common sense. And some of the things and how he teaches you how to be aware of your surroundings and know what's going on. Man, I, I, I keep that stuff to I, I use it all the time. I'm, I'm very aware of things just because of that. It was just a good overall training. Now, will it save your life? Is it 100 proof? Is it foolproof? I'm seeing it's 100 percent. No, nothing is. But. All you need is a fighting chance. I'm wondering if somebody went on to carry out the legacy of that and still train people in his ways i still have the dvds and the manuals and the knowledge of me doing it and everything well here's the deal here's how fangas fangas came to be i am at a class with him it's my first training class and it's you know it's about 20 people in the training class which is a healthy number chief's very personal Chief is up in your face. He's a, hey, by the way, he's a nice guy and a great guy. And you wouldn't even know that he could be so violent and dismember you. Guy taught me all types of things. I mean, like, do I really need to know the dirty dozen? Dirty dozen is knife fighting. Twelve places on somebody's body where you can stab up and kill them. Did I really need to know that? Nope. Do I remember that? Yep. Do I have a knife? Yep. But it's not about that. It's not about me. It's not about the knife. What it's about is um, a fighting chance. So he would go through the training. And as he went through the training and different techniques, one of the first things early on he would do is he would say he would do a series of moves and then he would go, yeah, fingers. Now I got my fingers in here. And the first time he said it, I thought it was hilarious. And he would go, you know, and then he would simplify it sometimes. He'd be like, move in this way and that, and then five fingers. And then since he would say, always say fingers, I got my fingers in you. When he would shorten it and just go, and then ah, fingers, I would go in you. And I said that to CJ one time. CJ cracked up because CJ knew what I was laughing about when he was like, fingers. And I'd be like, in you. And I said under my breath because I didn't want to throw Chief off. Chief was a man about some jokes when he wasn't about that action. You don't want those two to mix. When the guy trying to tell you how to save his life, you might not want to be the little funny dude in the corner when he going, fingers, and you going, in you. But we was laughing. Everybody thought it was funny the way he would say it. Um, but it was just hilarious And I always took it as a thing. All right. Here's how I took it. We laughed and joked. And during our thing, we'd be like, I'd be like, find us. And then people would say in you. But, you know, we would just do that. And I always thought about it in the standpoint of, well, here's where it gets weird. Hold on. Let me turn the ceiling fan on. It's getting hot up in here. So hot up in here. I might have to take my shirt off. Okay. The thing about it is, it made me always think of Rush Limbaugh. And I know you go, what, 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 Rush Limbaugh? Not about his politics, about the fact that when people called his show, they would say, ditto. So they call up, he's like, yo, you're on the Rush Limbaugh show. And they'd be like, ditto, Rush. And then ditto meant, I agree with you. It was a way for fans to acknowledge that they were like-minded and they were big fans of rush that's where the rush limbo story story stops i as a radio guy at the time fuck radio but I, at the time i was thinking to myself as i was trying to come into my own man i wish i had something that i my fingers <laughs> my fingers i wish i had <laughs> you know what I, mean? I wish that i had something that my fans could say on a phone call To let me know off the bat that they were big fans of mine. Kind of a call and response. And if a caller called up and said, fingers, I would go in you. It's the call and response. And fans who have been fans of mine forever, they do that. And I'll be, man, (laughs) 
Yeah, I was in Costa Rica one time and a dude walked up to me and said, Fingers. You know, so it's just kind of like a thing. And I wanted it to be a bigger thing. And sometimes I thought that when I was on the radio in, in Tampa, I didn't explain it enough. I did do an origin story on it. I've done it plenty of times, but this is how radio works. People only hear it when they hear it. You can't think that people hear every show that you do. So if you said it once in a segment every three months, some people are like, oh, this shit again. And other people are like, oh, I never knew. Why are you saying fingers? That sounds stupid. You're not even saying it right. Oh, it's me bonics or whatever. No, it has a meaning. It has significance. It's why I hash everything thing fingers. And that's F-A-N-G-A-Z. And the reply is in you. Hashtag I-N-Y-A. So if somebody hashtags me, fingers, I'm going to see it. I'm looking for it. If you hashtag me when you tweet me at the soul brother, yo, put fingers at the end of it. And then I'll know what's up. I'll know you're a fan. I'll know that you are. It's like, hey, man, I like the show. I get you and your particular brand of humor or whatever you want to call it that I do. And I'm rocking with you, bruh. And I appreciate people rocking with me. Look, your support is important. And I appreciate everybody who's been supporting the show so far because I do this show for bread and meat. If I don't work, I don't eat. And I love the control. I love the freedom. I love the fact that the show is soft and it's not solidified yet. It hadn't hardened up yet. You can cash at me at cat at soul brother, Kevin. You can Venmo me at soul brother, Kevin, and you can PayPal me at soul brother K. Um, that's how you can connect. That's how you can show some love. Any amount given will be appreciated and the love will be reciprocated. Here's what we're working on. What we're working on now is a Patreon. A Patreon, if you don't know what Patreon is, it is a platform where creators and independent media um, content creators can and can make subscriptions where you can go, hey, man, I, I love SBK and I want to help him out any kind of way I can. I don't have a lot of money, but look, $5, I can give him $5 a month. And what I'm going to give you there is I'm going to give you something different. I'm going to give you more of the same. I'll explain that in a minute. And then I'm going to give you extra that only you can hear because you decided to financially support the show. <sighs> Haven't finished building this out yet. And I thought that I would have it built out for you by the time you're hearing this release on a Monday. But I had a shitty week. And when I say shitty, bruh, you don't even want to know. You don't. And you don't really need to. And I'm not going to tell you. Not that part. I'll just say family medical emergencies that um, sometimes life comes at you fast. But if you are a praying person or a positive energy person, those positive energies and prayers were felt because things um, sometimes the universe uh, smiles on you as opposed to taking a dump. And this week was homecoming for FAMU, but it was also homecoming for my father. And I don't mean he went home. Oh, see, you see black people listening. You hear homecoming service. They, they think that's a funeral. No, I mean, he came home from the hospital from some medical issues. And that's why I'm in Tallahassee. And that's why this is first and foremost to me. And whatever happens was going to happen. And now through the fate, if you believe in fate, destiny luck all of that kind of mystical shit i don't believe in luck um let's just say the stars were aligned well that's some more mystical shit it let's just say everything happened the right way and that's still a roundabout kind of mystical i'm where i need to be and i wouldn't leave here if i had to because I have to do what I have to do, and I know what comes first. Took me a long time to figure that out, but I know what comes first, and I know what's most important, and that's what I'm all about. If that separates me from a job, it just does. But I um, I do appreciate the support. 
And to be honest with you, I never really thought I would earn or make a dime from the podcast that I'm doing right now because I knew it was a po- a process. And I knew that, well, hey, I got plenty of people reminding me, especially my man, my main man, um, the Black Hasselhoff. He told me, hey, man, you ain't really getting into your content yet. This ain't the show. Yo, th- yeah, I'm listening, but the show you're doing now, this ain't the show. Uh, I'm, I'll am i let you know what I think when you start doing the show. And I was like, man, I kind of knew you were going to say that. Yo, don't ask people for something. Don't ask people for an opinion if you can't accept what they give you. Shout out to the black uh, D- David Hasselhoff. Hoff. Um, and we'll say that um, when you support me on the Patreon, which I will have, I have content already for Patreon. Let me give you an example of what you would get on Patreon that you wouldn't get from listening to the podcast um, for free on Apple, Spotify, iHeart, whatever way you listen, Google Podcasts, Amazon, whatever, however you listen, it's on there, and you'll figure it out. If you're listening, you already figured it out. Congratulations. And I don't have to go through this thing of, hey, I don't know how to listen to a podcast. How? What? I'm sorry. I can't listen. I had a lady tell me, listen here. I'm so sorry. I love you, and I've been listening to you on the radio. I will not be able to listen to your podcast. And I go, why? She says, because I have to work every night. I can't listen to podcast. I said, you listen to the show. Why can't you? Would you listen to the show on the phone? She said, yeah. Then I said, well, if you can listen on the phone, if you can send me a message, are you texting me? Not texting. Are you emailing me from your phone? Yeah, I'm emailing you from my phone. But then you can listen to podcasts. There's no excuse, man. There's no excuse. And some of you may say, well, yo, there's no substitute for me just being able to access you in my normal routine. Well, if you were a fan of something why would you let it go so easily just because it's not necessarily convenient you used to listen to me when you're riding down the street you used to listen to me in your routine well now you could just go to an app and press play and hear me when you miss me now you may say well you're only doing one episode a week let's get back to the patreon here is how it will work so far, what I've already, you know, I didn't have much time, but I thought about it a little bit and I say, all right, you may not know this. I have different levels of fans. I may have a fan to be like, yo, I fucks with you. I got five on it. Five, five dollars a month, a subscription. That means that like you're going to get one episode a week. So that's four episodes in a month that you pay five dollars for for a guy that's giving it up, building it out of the mud by himself. No corporate backing. None of that. That's the freedom part that I get. The part that I don't get is a regular income. I would prefer what I'm doing now, giving you content that's not governed. And it gives me the freedom to get out in the world and experience things and not the same things you're experiencing or maybe. Yeah, well, somewhat, but just me freely to talk about them because I don't I'm not really guarded by certain things. See, here's the thing. I don't think I'm so special that something's happening to me that's not happening to you. I see people guarded by things and they don't want to talk about it. I'm like, what the fuck could be happening in your life that I've never heard before? There's nothing you're going to tell me unless it's about some alien shit or Asian people. I'm sorry. No, it's not Asian people. You know what I'm talking about? Yo, they eat octopus alive. That's different. But I've even heard that. So now it's normal. Okay. What I'm saying is that. So if you were to go onto my Patreon that I will be launching. Why did that do that to me? Stop it. I will. For $5, you're going to get the shows without commercials. And you'll also get the show. The intro is different on the Patreon show because I can use copyrighted music. So the intro that you love so much on the radio, man, I got crazy intros for you that I can do. Okay. You will also be supporting me 
Uh, that says another you love the show you it's worth at least five dollars a month for four episodes now you will also get bonus episodes that will not be for free that will just be for the people that pay five dollars now if you move up to ten dollars what do you get for that oh then you get all of the stuff i just said plus my discord what is the discord yeah i'm still trying to figure that shit out but that's where i'll talk to you intimately and build a community of people that are in the SBK. This is for the real fans, the people that want to dig a little deeper and you will get access to stuff like, um, all of my songs that I've done, not trying to sell an album. I'll just give those away as added value, hurricane song, all that kind of stuff. And then we will go to that's five ten. Then we'll go to a $20 level where you will get it all. You'll get to see me cooking crabs. You'll just get to see me just doing normal stuff like up close and in your face, just kind of impromptu, just wilding out, just thoughts. You'll get to help collaborate with me um, and just whatever. Show advice, show topics. Yo, I might even do the random. uh, I might randomize you and pull you up and pull you into the show. You got to also understand. There's other things that are coming that will be thrown into the mix as well. I'm going to start doing. I got to scratch my live itch. I got to scratch my live itch. I miss being live and taking callers. The recorded callers are great, but I miss taking live calls. So you'll get some shit like uh, I'll pop you up and maybe I'll ask you to prepare a topic and you can come on and present something and we'll talk and we'll chop it up and we'll do that for the video thing. Or I'll be on YouTube. I'm getting ready to start a YouTube channel. I told you I ain't started cause I chipped my tooth and damn it took me so long to go to the doctor. I was scared as hell to go to the doctor. I'm like, yo, you're going to get COVID. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, how you going to, yeah, I'm still scared of COVID. I'm not outside. But, but here's the thing. How you going to, with the COVID, how you going to escape the COVID and you go to a place and your mouth wide open? That's like, give me that COVID. Give me that COVID. Like, that's like asking, can I can I have the COVID, please? Yes. Yes. Uh, medium rare. Yeah. Oh, 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 you got sauce for that? Oh, give me extra sauce on my shit. I'm trying to get on that shit. All right. Well, what did I do? SB Keezy is off the heezy so you can make mine extra cheesy. Yeah, I had the low battery warning, and when I saw the low battery warning, zap, just like that, just like my radio career, battery dead, laptop reset. In full disclosure for people who listen to this, I don't record this show in parts. I don't like come in and give you a little bit now, give you a little bit later, but I did have to stop because the computer just shut off because it was out of power i didn't have a power cord plugged in i went and ate me a slice of cheesecake Mm -hmm. i sure did and now i'm back at it and i have no idea what i was talking about there's like a 20 minute gap in what you're hearing now and before you hear me go hey what happened So anyway, I don't know what the hell I was talking about and I don't have anybody here remind me. Thank God. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a call. You can always call the show and comment and say whatever you want to say at four zero seven. Okay, let me reset. That's four zero seven two seven six zero six one nine. You can either rewind that for the number or you can look in the show notes. Either way, you can call. You have direct access to me. You can have your say uninterrupted and I will play it on the show if it's good enough. If it's not good enough, I won't. I'll play a call and then I will get into what I'd like to call the subway story. Yo, what's up, SBK? Brian here. Been listening uh, to uh, came to Tampa a little bit in Orlando. I just had a quick question. I know you want to move on. I've listened to both of your podcasts so far. I'm loving it. Hopefully, I can PayPal you. Maybe uh, help you get ahead a little bit. I just have a question about time slot at Mo. It was just a quick question. Like, if it was budget cuts, why aren't they playing a replay during that time slot? Why does Mo have a show from six to eight? I still have not listened to one second since you left. 
you made that show, or your show, and I look forward to the uh, the continuation of the podcast. Thank you. I want to thank you for your call, but I really want to shut you down on your call. So think about what you said. You gave me some props, and then you started talking about a situation that I'm no longer a part of. So let me just say this. The questions that you have about what happened with the time slot after I left literally have nothing to do with me. It sounds like it is a customer service issue for a station that I no longer work for. Now, what I would advise you to do is this, whatever you want to do, but if you want to support me and you called to tell me how much you think, you know, you support me and what I do and what I'm all about, you connect with the SBG, um, here's the deal. I suggest you find a way to use that PayPal. I'm so brother K on PayPal. Links are in the description. If you downloaded the podcast and you heard it, you can look in the description. You can see the PayPal. PayPal. Ooh, ooh. You can see the PayPal and you can so brother K that thing. What you can't do is re-engineer a place that I don't work for. No ill will and nothing against Mo, but, um, Mo was told that he had to do his job and he's doing his job and he's doing a fine job at it. I support him. Here's the thing. If you want to support me, I'm over here, not over there. And I have nothing to do with what they do after the moment they said we are no longer in business. And you got to understand when I get questions from people who say what's going on with the station, you have to understand I don't work for the station. So what can I tell you about a place I don't work for? I can't tell you anything, but what I can do is uh, continue to punch out this pod pot so hot and just do what I do, man. There ain't really nothing else to it. That's all I can do. So here's the subway story. And this is in by no means to this subway. Just telling you that they're not a sponsor of this podcast. Maybe potential, but probably not. I'm just telling you what happened to me on a regular routine visit to a subway. I have to put it in perspective. The perspective is this. Without getting into a lot of detail, there was a medical emergency at my home. My, um, we had to call 911. Paramedics arrived. My father was taken to hospital. My mother and I, Followed in the car. Um, being in the hospital. In the emergency room. Poses a very big problem for me. Because where I'm sitting. In the hospital. With a mask on. Of course. And that goes without saying. I had a mask and a rub on. Uh, well. There's people coming in left and right talking about, I think I got COVID. Cough, cough, sneeze, sneeze, hack, hack, no mask, looking crazy. I sat in there about for about four hours. Anyway, just to make a long story short, trying to figure out what was going on. Was not a good day. That's all the details I'll give because I'm free with my information. But when it comes to information about my parents, they didn't sign up for any of this. Just giving you the broad stroke so you can figure out my state of mind. As my mother says, I would like something to eat. And I said, what would you like to eat? She goes, well, if you can't get me a sa sandwich or something. I'm sorry. Or a salad. And I go, well, man, yeah. I'm looking around in the area that we're in. I said, hey, there's a subway up the street. No problem. I'm going to go get you a subway. We go up to subway. I'm sorry. I go up to Subway. Man, I'm getting my story all mixed up here. I am going to Subway. I pull in and I go in. 
I'm masked up. There's a lady, young lady. Hey, welcome to Subway. What can I get for you? And I said, hey, I'd like to get a salad. And I'm looking on the menu board and I don't see salads on the menu board. She seems like she's new, but doesn't want to say that she's new. And she goes, oh, yeah, we have salads. And I go, well, where are they? And she turns around. She looks at the menu board. She starts at one side on the right. She looks all the way down on the left. And she goes, "Mm, I don't see them, but I know we have salads. I go, "Okay." Where are they on the menu? So I'm looking and I'm looking up and down and up and down and up and down and nothing. And then. A couple minutes later, I'm looking and she's looking still. She doesn't want to ask somebody because I can tell now I know she's new. And there is a manager guy. Well, he seemed like he was managing the situation because he was all over the place, busybody, kind of checking in here, checking in there, ringing some people up, making a sandwich, walking around, making sure the drive through was straight. He looked like he was the guy that was in charge. And so that's how that went down. I looked on the menu and it said something to the point of make any sandwich a salad. But it, it, it literally said it, make any sub a salad. I know I said sandwich, but now I'm saying sub. I think it said sub because they make subs. It's Subway. Make any sub a salad. Didn't just straight up say salads. And I said, okay, hey, look at that right there. That says make any sub a salad. So let me get a turkey breast sub. I'm sorry, salad. <laughs> I'm so sorry, this podcast. I'm sorry for the whole damn thing. The whole mess of it all. Let me get a turkey salad. Girl goes, okay. She pulls out the little tray after she looks around for it behind her. I know she's brand new. She doesn't know what she's doing. Young, younger black chick. Braids. Braids aren't important, but I'm just saying braids. Cute. Probably a college kid grinding it out, working and trying to do something here. I'm all good with that. So far, my antenna, my soul brother senses are not at full alert. I'm just kind of, you know, trying to get some food back to my mom who's been in a ER full of people with COVID waiting to see what my dad's uh, going through. And I can't really be in that situation. I was trying to find a way to get out of it as soon as possible. So what I did was. I double masked up and then, you know, I got some next level mask. I'm not a rookie at this thing. I understand the microns and the particles and how big the coronavirus is and what kind of mask you need to block those particles. I understand that. And I adhere to that with two of them. OK, with that being said, I'm always the guy in the room with the mask. Like, yo, what's that? That's cool. That's different. Yeah, bitch. That's safer. You know what I mean? I ain't wearing them regular masks. I got a tight seal around my shit. But anyway, let's get back to the story. When we get the salad going, girl puts uh, lettuce at the bottom of the you know tray. She goes, hey, what'd you want on the salad? And I said, look, it's basically turkey salad sub at Subway. Yo, it's basically the sub without the bread, right? And she kind of laughs. Yeah. And I said, so put everything on it that you would put on the bread. And she goes, okay, well, tell me what you want. I said, let me get the lettuce. We get the lettuce. So let me get some um, onion. Let me get some tomato. Now, mind you, the tomato slices that she puts on, they're total round slices. She puts about four of them on there. And I go, is that how many you would put on a turkey sandwich? She goes, sure. And I go, okay, let me get some onion. Throw in a little spinach, right? So now we got what? We got lettuce. We got some onion. We got some tomato. We got some cucumber. We got a little spinach. And I said, what about the cheese? And she goes, oh, yeah, you got to get the cheese. And I said, yeah, because that's what comes on it, right? She's like, yeah. So put the cheese on there. What kind of cheese you want? Provolone. Get the provolone cheese. We move it on down. And I go, okay, that's kind of a salad right there. No peppers, no nothing like that. We don't want any of that. 
And I said, let me get some oil and vinegar. Yeah, okay. Let me get the little dash of salt and pepper. Okay, we got that right there. She goes, what kind of salt, what kind of salad dressing would you like? And I go, well, we got the oil and vinegar, but let me get a little vinaigrette type of deal. And she goes through things. She finds the vinaigrette kind of thing. And then she puts the salad up at the register. And there's a guy who looks like the manager I talked about earlier, bouncing around. He goes, and I look at it and I go, yo, that looks kind of light. That doesn't look right. Not to me. And he says, hey, would you like any water or chips? We want to make this a combo. And I said, no. He rings it up and he says, $11.99. And I go, yee, yikes. And I said, hey, $11.99 for what? And he goes, I said, just for that salad? Guy who, let me tell you what this guy looks like. He looks like from Back to the Future, McFly's dad. He looks like that guy with the black hair. He looks like the McFly guy. Now insert Rotten teeth. Yo, not one tooth that this sucker had in his mouth was legit. They were all meth rot. They were all black. It's unfortunate. I'm sure he wasn't on meth. I'm sure it was just an unfortunate genetic thing. And he can brush them things down to the gums and they weren't going to be right. But yo, he had rotten teeth with the blackness. Okay. Now, I only say that to say, yo, if you got rotten teeth, and anybody listening right now that got rotten teeth, I'm pretty sure you're trying to get rid of them and you don't smile or some shit like that. But you can't be living a good life. You have to be miserable. I think that's a rule. If you have rotten looking teeth, then you are totally miserable in your life. This guy had to be miserable. So he says, um, I go, yo. 11 what what did i say 11 dollars. it was like 11 dollars. and it's like 11 dollars for a salad and i said is that right and he says yeah that's right i said are you sure because the thing right there says make any sub a salad so is that based on the six inch or the 12 inch do you guys sell 12 inch subs for 11 dollars in here because see you get in a plastic tray with what should be a turkey sub with no bread. So I'm not getting the bread. I'm getting extra lettuce. Yo, lettuce is water. Lettuce is free. So I'm not hustling you for anything here. And he says, man, I just push a button that says salad, and that's what it is. And I go, yo, do you think that salad right there is worth $11? And he says, what do you want, man? Do you want me to put some more lettuce and shit on your salad? And there's two people in line right behind me and they're hearing all of this. And I said, in this voice, I wasn't rude. I wasn't loud. I wasn't crazy. I said, nah, man, I don't want any lettuce and shit on my salad. I said, is your manager here? Who's the manager here? He goes, the manager's not here right now. And I said, well, can I get the number of the owner of this place? Just cash me out, man. So I should pay $11 for what should be a full-on salad, but it was the skimpiest of the skimpiest of salads that wouldn't even equal up to a six-inch turkey sub. Yo, it was sad. And I don't understand how people can get thrown off really so easily by snatching the bread out of the situation you snatch the bread out you make it the same it's a yo at subway a six inch turkey sub and a salad a turkey salad it's the same shit minus the bread add extra lettuce which is cheaper than the bread brah and what you have is a turkey salad. But they acted like, you know, first of all, even the dude, he was looking on the damn menu. He, the manager, rotten tooth dude, he couldn't figure out where the salad was. And he's like, I just push a button. 
And I'm sure that usually works uh, much uh, for most people, but it didn't work for me. We were on a nice side of town. I guess he thought he could fade me because he probably looked like I'm, I'm, yeah, hey, right about now, I probably don't look like a dude to eat a lot of salads. But hey, bro, you got to wake up a little, you got to wake up early in the morning to fool me. So here's what I told him. I said, uh, who's your manager? Can you give me the number? This guy tells me the the owner of the place, his name is Brian, and his phone number is right out there on the sign. So on the sign outside, there's the big subway sign, the marquee sign that they have in front of the restaurant that usually has some sort of slogan or their specials or whatever they have going on in the store. This thing has a phone number underneath. And he says, if you call that number, the owner, Brian, will answer the phone. This is a privately owned store. And I said, okay, cool. I took my Subway sandwich. No, I didn't have a sandwich, sorry. I took my salad and I left, got in the car, and I drive off. I walk out, I drive off, but before I drive off, I take a picture of the sign. I dial the number. And I'm riding down the street, headed back to the emergency room, give my mom salad. She hasn't had anything to eat all day. She's waiting on me. I call the number. And someone answers the phone. They said, this is Brian. How can I help you? And I said, hey, Brian, are you the owner owner of Subway at, you know, so and so address on this road in this city? He says, yes, I am. What's going on? How can I help you? I said, I just left your store. And I received questionable service. Had a guy making, you know, that rung me up and he asked me if I wanted some more lettuce. I gave him the whole story. I gave him the whole spiel. What I missed on this, what I forgot to tell you about is in the middle of the the girl making my salad, the guy came over and he said something really dicky to her. Like he really, I don't know what it was. You could tell she was over it. And this guy has been giving her a hard time because she was just like, and I did tell her, hey, it's OK. Don't worry about that guy. He was being a dick to her in the midst of her working her shift. So that's how I know she was new. So I said, hey, I just left your store. Not for nothing. I ordered a salad. People in there didn't seem to know that you guys sold salads. It was a very weird thing. The guy that presented himself as the guy in charge, as the manager, said he didn't know how much the salad cost. I asked him if it was based. I paid $11 for the salad. Here's my receipt. And I said, I didn't know if it was based on a 6-inch sub or a 12-inch sub, but I didn't think you sold subs for $11 up in there. This is minus the bread. Bro, we're just talking about some lattice. And he says, oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry this happened to you. I'm sorry it was horrible service. He just goes on and on. I'm sorry this happened, and I'm sorry you had that. Problem. Well, let me remedy this for you. I tell you what. I am on the way up to the subway right now, and I will take care of this. That's when my soul brother census went off. He didn't address anything that was actually going to give me any kind of remedy. What he addressed was an employee exhibiting bad customer service. And this was the right side of town where you don't really want bad customer service. This wasn't in the ghetto with the hood boogers. Nah, bro, this was on the good side of town. I was 38 hot. Because in the middle of that conversation... I realized I was talking to the same rotten tooth motherfucker who I just encountered in the restaurant. And when I realized that, I said, well, the guy that gave me service, unfortunately, I don't remember his name. I couldn't see his call, but every tooth in his mouth was rotten. And I found that offensive as a customer. Let me tell you, if you're going to be making people's food, You can't have rotten teeth or you can take advantage of the current situation and wear a mask. I would think rotten tooth motherfuckers would thrive. 
with a mask in this situation. I was talking to the same guy. I got played. I got ripped off and I got bad customer service in a very trying time. And I was having a really bad day. And I'm telling you guys this because this happened about three weeks ago. And I haven't let it go yet. I'm just now talking about it. I had it written down. I would have talked about it on the radio. I wouldn't have been able to say the name of the place, but I don't really care. They don't pay for anything that I have anything to do with. And I don't. And you know what? I said to the guy on the phone for a company that's trying to escape the reputation of having a pedophile as your spokesman. You would think the customer service would be better. But I'm telling this to the same rotten tooth motherfucker who just gave me horrible customer service and asked me if I wanted some more lettuce and shit on my salad. The fact that he would ask me if I wanted some more lettuce and shit, the level of disrespect that he showed me. And we're talking about under twenty dollar disrespect. But let me tell you, I paid eleven dollars for a salad that wasn't worth five. I don't know what a turkey sub goes for at Subway, but it wasn't even worth what that was. I should have just ordered a turkey sub and scraped that shit in a damn container and say, hey, here's your salad, mama, because this shit was trash. It was garbage. And a company that had a pedophile as a spokesman and as the lead man does need to do better. And I'm not talking about having Tom Brady and every celebrity you can think of. Come to your rescue. Well, they didn't come to your rescue. You paid them to be in the commercials. I expect a higher level of service. I expect a higher level of quality. And I don't expect some rotten tooth motherfucker trying to serve me, uh, trying to play me like some kind of simp. So here's how this ends. I press pause on all of that. I'm just now telling you guys this three weeks later. I didn't have time that day, but I will have time soon. And I'm going back to that subway. I'm going to find out who Brian is, the owner. I'm going to make him aware. And then I'm going to make subway, the corporation aware. And I'm going to make everyone aware that. You're going to respect my dollar. I don't have to go there anymore. I could let this go. But the fact that I was having such a bad day and what was going on, you know, that doesn't mean anything. Everybody has a bad day. Everybody, you're going to have a bad day tomorrow. I ain't special. I ain't nobody. But you tried to play me. And that's all this is about now. This ain't no salad. It ain't about that. It ain't about the hard day I was having. A life crisis. It's not about any of that. It's about the fact that this rotten tooth motherfucker tried to play me. And the rotten teeth is his own punishment. But if that's how you feel and that's how you want to exert your anger and your sadness on the world by giving bad customer service. It's not just bad customer service. See, I got bad customer service while I was there. But then he tried to play me. And I'm going to see you. And you're going to see me. That's not a threat of violence. That's a threat of exacting respect. Because see, if respect's not given, then it has to be exacted. And I'm going to exact it. I don't know how it's going to end, but I'm going to make it a big deal. You know why? Because you tried to play me. And there's a lot of people in my radio career that tried to play me. And I let them slide. And they know who they are. And, you know, you owe me one. But I've evolved and some of these things aren't as big of a deal to me. There's some things I shouldn't let go that I have let go. But that little rotten tooth motherfucker at Subway, he ain't going to play me. 
He ain't going to get me. Now, I may can't record the conversation that's going to happen. I think Florida's a two-party state. I got to talk to my lawyer and figure out how I can legally expose people or whatever. I don't know what I have to do. And I've had so much shit happening later. I'm sorry, just lately that I don't have time to get mired down in this. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes you can't let motherfuckers slide. And unfortunately for this rotten tooth motherfucker, his rotten teeth ain't his only problem. I don't know who owns that subway, but they're going to hear from me and they're going to see from me immediately, if not sooner. Not letting it go. I'm sorry. And I don't have anybody that has to tell me that I have to listen to to stop. Hey, Kevin. James from Denver. Uh, no, no. Still not tired of the weed. All right. Talk to you later. Of all the times in my life, I picked 2021 to stop smoking weed. I'm talking illegal. I'm talking about letting my medical card expire when I could smoke legally. When I just decided it wasn't a good look for me, it just was something that I couldn't do. Really, um, I was here in taking care of medical situations. So I had to be on point. So it was kind of like an obvious thing that I don't need to be, um, on weed, you know, when I'm doing meds, when I'm looking out for people's well being, my purpose was bigger than my pleasure. And that's how I've been living my life in more ways than one for longer than I ever thought I would have to. But yeah, James, enjoy your weed. I did tell you that if you moved to Colorado once we got legal, you would get tired of it. And you didn't. And maybe one day I'll be able to smoke some. But, eh, not today. What's up, big dog? It's the meat man. Hey, bro, just checking in with your man. Good to hear you back. Never miss you because he's always there. But uh, just, just got a question, man. I know you're moving through the, you know, without you, I wouldn't be in the meat game. And uh, as you, you know, you, you move forward, we had the tacos you was all into. And then I think you went a little vegan, vegetarian-ish, I would say. So what's the new food Kev's into? What, what we got? What's Tyler Housie pushing out? What's what's mom pushing out? What, what, what are you eating now? But uh, hit me up, dude. You got my number. Always here to support you. Fangers, bro. And you. shout out to the meat, man. Yeah, meat, man. I've been all over the place. And I've been up and I've been down. Now I'm up. I'm up like 15 pounds. Been enjoying this southern cooking, this home cooking for my mother. You know, it's hard to press to get another woman to cook for you. Women don't cook no more, really. But, yeah, I don't know where I'm at on the thing, bro. I'm a struggling vegan, which means I drink a green juice and eat some bacon at the same time. Totally confused. I'll eat a salad and I'll find a way to make that unhealthy. I, I'm still in the meat game, bro. <laughs> I don't really know what to tell you, but I can't do the meat game up here. I told you on the phone, man, there's so many guys up here cooking barbecue to a level that you, you would not understand. It's like, yo, if I'm in Tallahassee, you ain't competing with no people on no barbecue. You better find something else to do. You better find something interesting to bring to the table. And the food game here is amazing. Street level, restaurant level, you're just not going to. There's how many real places do you want? How many barbecue places do you want to go to that's throwing down or food trucks that have unique takes on things? Yo, the other day, man, I went to a turkey leg place where they put a whole meal inside of a turkey leg. Good luck turning vegan in Tallahassee. And don't get me started on the seafood game. Hello, SDK. I read earlier this week some guy in North Carolina won millions of dollars and discrimination lawsuit uh, it was a white dude and he said that he was fired so his company can have more diversity hires do you think reverse racism is racism is real uh, that's an interesting question let me just say when you say reverse racism you admit that there is racism 
But then when you say it's reverse, it means that only one side is perpetuating the racism. I don't know the details of this case. I'm just using your phrasing to answer it because it sounds kind of weird. You're saying some white guy got, he won a racism case because they fired him and they said they were trying to have more diversity. Well, hey, it sounds like the court, based on the facts that they were presented, looks like that's the way they ruled. Here's what I'll say. To me, racism is about power. Man, once again, on my podcast, the SBK Show, I didn't bring race to the table in anything. We damn near hour into this thing. But somebody asked me a question, I will answer it. Do I think that revert? So some white dude wins. Well, he won what he won, and I don't really have an opinion on that. That's the court case, and I might have to look up that later. But we live in the moment right now, and just like in the radio when somebody calls up live in the moment, I give you an answer. I'm not going to stop this thing and figure out what the details were. Here's what I'll say. In my opinion, racism is a thing of power. And it doesn't matter where that power comes from. If you're in a situation where the minority or has the power, then they have the power to reflect affect your life. If it's just some, let's say I'm black. Let's say there's some homeless white dude that calls me the N word. Is he holding me down? I don't think so. But if my boss is calling me the N word, hmm, that's different. So it's about power. The powers that be, saw fit to fire this guy or whatever because they wanted diversity they want to bring in more black people man that might sound like racism to me because it might be about power racism ain't about how you feel about somebody somebody didn't treat you right they were rude to you that's not racism that right there is something totally different when you have the same credit score and you can't get the same home loan as somebody else. That's racism. And they never called you the N-word. So you got to get it straight on what you think racism is. Um, I'll just say this. If it's a room full of white people, ain't nothing about race to a black person walk in the room. SBK, what's up, man? Hey, it's good to hear you doing your thing, man, and making your voice heard again, bro. You're going to do good regardless where you go. Like a cat, you're going to fall on all four feet. Um, just want to tell you, man, you're doing great. I know you're going to do great. You don't worry about that, man. Thanks for the kind words, my brother. Yes, I will land on my feet like a cat, even though I feel like a dog. Hey, SBK, what's going on? This is Ray Mello uh, calling from Abu Dhabi, and uh, I tune into your podcast show every week great show last week i have a interesting question i know it's the week after halloween do you think that 2021 has gone fast this year has gone fast because if you think about it, we have thanksgiving coming up and then afterwards christmas and that's it and moving on to the new year what are, you, what are your thoughts about that and then the second part of the question is what are some of your highlights of this year what are some of the good things that happened to you this year uh, and the opposite. Uh, and uh, do you think that uh, this year in 2021 you changed to become a better person? Uh, and if so, uh, what are some of the, uh, your sort of like your um, aspirations uh, in the future? Get back to me on that. Thank you. In you, Ray Mello. Yo, Ray Mello's a really cool and interesting dude shout out to ray Mello. let me tell you ray i think that 2021 was a very interesting year first i thought that it was worse than 2020 because i thought coming off of 2020 you would have the anniversaries and the holidays and you would have family members and friends pop up in Facebook as reminders that they're no longer here. You'd have birthdays and just sent celebrations without loved ones and stuff like that. I, and I, I thought it was going to be worse. Then all of a sudden we get hit with this Delta thing. I, I'm going to tell you that my biggest disappointment for 2021 was finding out that the vaccine 
did not stop you from spreading the virus. That really, I mean, I was getting ready to just really get back out in the world and embrace life and just jump in head first. But being immunocompromised, as you all know, can't really mess around with it. And what I think is the reason why 2021 went so fast. I agree with you. It did go fast. It's because people were back outside. Life kind of got back to normal for most people. And the conversations surrounding the vaccine and the virus really didn't stop people. It was only a big deal in relation to people trying to get back out in the world and maybe your job requiring you to do it. That's when it popped up. It's not like I don't see the concern like I used to. I just see people moving on. And that's um, what was the most disappointing thing for me in 2021, that I was not in a place where I felt comfortable moving on yet. And I didn't even know what moving on meant or what that looked like. Well, some of the good things for me in 2021 was coming back to Tallahassee, being with family and reestablishing the importance of family and tradition and that type of thing in my life and kind of just wishing that I had did it sooner. Looking forward to the future, I'm looking back to really getting just back to normal. I don't know what normal is. Um, I'm not comfortable moving on yet, but I would like to move on. I would like to possibly meet um, a woman or somebody. Well, I can't say, well, a woman. <laughs> Let me just say that, a woman. Yeah, and I like, like there's other options or something like that for me. But just saying that the possibilities of that, um, I look forward to 2022. Two, right? Yeah, I look forward to that being a better year than this year. And I think things will generally get better, not just for me, but for the world, for everybody. I, I just think that we're coming out of a 2020. And if FAMU's homecoming this weekend was any indication of the route it's going to go, we're getting ready to get back to the roaring 20s. I think everything's going to be in excess as the Virus goes further, further in the background. I think there's going to be more of everything and that's good and that's bad and that's ugly. Let me tell you this week, my focus will be to get the Patreon up and running. I am um, working on that still. I did not launch it today and going forward. I feel like what works for me best is to put the podcast out at 6 p.m. on Monday. So, hmm part in the struggle but it continues we're building i appreciate all of your support any links that you may need are in the liner notes of this podcast also for everything related to me you can go to soulbrotherkevin.com feel free to reach out you can text me you can call and leave a message you can go to the social medias and hit me up you can do whatever you want to do and i hope you would like to support the show you can paypal cash app venmo or you could just give me good praises and uh well wishes and positive energy in the universe and all that with your chakras and all of that good stuff if you're on apple or itunes podcast please review the show give me five stars yo give me five stars i can understand one star but you listen i appreciate that too but not four stars yo i gotta talk about that now